Confused about what career to choose? Not quite sure of the range of study and work options compatible with your personality, aptitude and interests? Welcome to Career Cafe, where we give you a ringside view of an exciting career each week. Together, we shall explore the pros and cons, the ins and outs, the programs and prospects, all the stuff you need to make an informed and successful career choice. I'm your host and career guide, Parveen Malhotra. On our menu today is careers in architecture. So let's take a quick look at the entry routes to becoming an architect. The Bachelor of Architecture or B-Arch program is a five-year undergraduate course that is the stepping stone to a career in architecture. Like other professional courses, admission to B-Arch is based on a competitive entrance exam. The main entrance exams are IIT JEE Architecture Aptitude Test. B-Arch is offered at only two IITs, Kharagpur and Madras. Only students who qualify the IIT JEE are eligible to sit for the subsequent Architecture Aptitude Test. Eligibility is Class 12 Science PCM students with minimum 60%, 55% for SC, ST and PH. AIEEE Architecture Entrance Exam Non-science students are also eligible to take the AIEEE B Arch B Plan Entrance Exam on 29th May 2012. Eligibility is class 12 with maths as a subject and 50% aggregate. National Aptitude Test in Architecture Other than the IITs, NITs and SPA, NATA scores are used for admission to B Arch and B Plan courses in all other schools of architecture. Eligibility is class 12 with any stream with maths as a subject and 50% aggregate. Have you ever gazed at iconic buildings and wondered how great it would be if only you could design them? Have you ever marveled at the sheer genius and creativity when you look at the Taj Mahal or the Lotus Temple in Delhi or the Infosys campus in Mysore? If you have, then architecture just might be the perfect career option for you. Every doorway, wall and window in every building is where it is because the architect decided to put it there. The architect also decides what building materials would be used, what traffic patterns people would follow, and even how they would feel when entering or leaving the building. The same person may also have been responsible for designing the plumbing, heating, and electrical systems, air conditioning, and even overseeing the building's construction. To sketch the career path and walk us through the varied options in architecture, the skills, aptitude, creativity required to become one, we have with us Vikram Lal. Vikram is partner and principal architect at Lal & Associates. Over a career spanning 25 years, Vikram has led design teams that have successfully completed over 200 projects in India and abroad, of which many have received critical acclaim. The list of prestigious projects includes the Akshardham Cultural Complex in New Delhi, the Indian School of Business, ISB Hyderabad, several DPS schools across the country, the Buddha Smriti Park and ITC Maurya Towers Hotel in Patna. Vikram is also a popular visiting faculty at several architecture schools, including SPA Delhi, and has served on the jury of numerous design competitions a bachelor's in architecture from the College of Architecture, Chandigarh. Vikram has an MS from Cambridge University. Welcome to Career Cafe, Vikram. What a pleasure to have you with Thank us. you. Hi. Hi. So tell us, Vikram, uh, this decision to become an architect or join architecture school is something that students need to take straight after class 12. Right. So how should they or their parents, you know, arrive at a decision whether or not to pursue architecture? So at such an early stage? Well, actually it's good if you can take the decision early because you can then identify if you have the skills to become an architect. You know, although most of the skills could be trained and you could be taught that, it would be nice to know if you have some of them at least, you know, before you join. Uh, what are those? Uh, well, you know, if you have, uh, uh, if you have an inclination towards um, being creative, you know, you like drawing, and you are observant. The most important thing is that you observe things, you know. Because architecture is all about trying to identify issues and then make something creative out of it. You know? So if you can observe those 
you know, conditions through which people live in you know, their daily life, you know, then you can use them, and, you know, to design buildings. Right, right. And so what, uh, so what is taught in a typical architecture course? It's a five-year program. So... What? Well, you know, architecture, unlike engineering, is a longer course. It's a five-year program as against uh, engineering course for four years, you know. And that's only because here in architecture you teach both the, both the sciences and the and arts, yeah. arts together. And because you have to balance them, you have to know technology and techniques because you design buildings, you design structures, and you design plumbing, electrical, etc. Also because you have to be creative, so you have to learn art. You have to learn how to draw. You have to, and also because you have to understand human condition, you have to kind of study sociology, or psychology, his, psychology history. So all these, you know, architecture is probably the only course where you have a diverse range of subjects that you study. And in fact, it prepares you not only as an architect, but as a springing board to do many other creative things. Because I can name many architects who do a bachelors of architecture and then go mm. on to make movies. Yes, right. You absolutely. know, and because you're trained as, as a creative person, you know, and also have a balance with science. So it's a perfect course, no? In that sense, in that sense yes. 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 In that you sense, have liberal yes. arts and you have correct, correct. technology yeah. and engineering. So that's fantastic. Absolutely, absolutely. And in fact, in olden days, you know, architects used to be, you know, um, Leonardo da Vinci or people mm. like that or Michelangelo and they were all in the, the Renaissance man was uh, a composite of art and yes, science together yes, you know, so, yes. so it's it's modeled pretty much like that you know this modern profession of architecture you know so even if somebody sort of makes a slight mistake having chosen architecture you know and then realizes down the line that perhaps pure architecture is not his cup of tea there's so much else that so he can do definitely that it, this is the beauty of a bachelor's course in architecture although Many people do masters after that, yes. which is more super specialized, you know. But in a bachelor's course of architecture, it's, it, 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 it allows you to, you know, use what you have learned for five years to do many other things, you know, you know and not be restricted only to buildings. So talking of uh, people going on to do their masters, is that, uh, is that the norm now? Is that required? Is that, man I mean, mandatory in today's well, it's scenario? Not a, it's not a norm, but hmm. it's, it's always useful to have... Uh, a master's uh, because in today's scenario first of all you know there's a lot of super specialization in every field in, in medicine you see you know you know um, doctors doing all kinds of super specializations similar is the case in the built environment where within a building you have so many other disciplines that work you know landscaping and then larger issues of you know built environment urbanism urban planning transport planning urban design historical conservation, you know. So you have many other courses that you can do after bachelors of architecture and super specialize, you know, and all of them come together to define the environments that we but live in. But suppose you wanted to specialize in interiors. Would you need to do a master's uh, with, with a specialization in interiors or that would come along well, the way? Well, you can, you can, you know, you know, you don't have to do master's to be able to start working. Right. But if, you know, but in interiors you don't have to do that because interiors is very much part of a Bachelor of Architecture course. So you learn to okay. design interiors when you're doing Bachelors of Architecture. There are some courses, however, which are now doing Masters in Interiors as well. But the super specialized courses are very, very focused, you know, like transport planning is all about transportation systems and, you know, I mean, it's, it's, you don't know that in architecture. You don't study that in Bachelors of Architecture. So you have to do a Masters for that. If you do landscape architecture, it's also very specialized, you know, you have to there are many issues that yes, you don't... soil and yeah, plants, and plants and and height and yes, climate so and all of that. So it, it, is, it, is, it is much larger than, you know, architecture that you study for five years, you know. So there you have to do a master's. You know. But do students straight after having done a BR course uh, know that this is the field they want to specialize in? Shouldn't they be working for a bit I, and then... I, I think I agree with that because, you know, because you study for five years, I always believe that you should be able to practice what you've studied for some time and digest it before you can do, you should do a master's. Because, you know, there are other schools of thought which say, okay, you can do master's in a continuous form, but, you know, it's not about getting a degree. Right. In architecture, right. degree really doesn't matter because you should be able to apply what you've studied in practice. And to be able to do that, you have to practice. You have to work with someone. You have to know the ropes, you know, and there's so many things you learn which you don't learn in a college, you know, when you very practice. Very true, very true. So, master's is always useful when you have got some experience, you've consolidated what you've studied, and, and then, then a master's. You know. 
So um, straight out of a BR course, um, what does a student do? I mean, what would you advise uh, him or her to do? Go and join an architect or a construction firm or a builder? Uh, I think definitely not join a builder okay. or a construction firm. Okay. If you want to do good architecture, you have to work with a good architect okay. as an apprentice. It's the same guru shishya kind of a phenomena here, you know. You have to work in an environment where somebody can guide you and teach you the the good from the bad, you know. I mean, you know, there are many things that's happening in the industry. So um, that happens when you practice and work with someone. And that's the first advice, that you join for a few years, work, get to see the bricks and mortar, which you don't see in college so much. Sure. Go to the site, you know. You know, you have to get the touch and feel of making buildings. And uh, But would the architect let you do that or would he confine you to the drawing board? Or? Well, I think good architects would let you do that, you know. And, uh, um, um, you know, you. it also depends on how much you push your yes. the envelope, you know, you want sure, to, sure. You want to get, get involved in various things. You know. Typically they would, you know, because there's no reason why um, you would be, you know, kept away from all the aspects of making the building happen that's happening in the studio you know and uh, i think the idea is to get your foot in the door you know and then if correct. you keep your eyes and ears open that's Cor where, that's how you learn correct. really correct correct yeah. so do you get paid uh, decently when you join and as an apprentice i it's always you know pay is very comparative you know and if if you compare it with somebody who's doing investment banking oh, sure sure, know, it's, it's sure. Really, so but then this is such a long-term career as it's, compared yeah. to investment so banking. It, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, so. it's, you should compare it with, let's say, medicine if you go and join a government hospital, you know. So so while you are going through your process of learning as yeah. an apprentice, you know, you're not paid that much, you know. Right? Sure. But, you know, typically anybody who's serious in architecture doesn't mind that because they want to learn, they want to get exposed to, you know, the buildings that are being designed. And uh, so the pay is average. It's not uh, too high or too low. But, you know, um, once you have learned and once you have graduated to a position of responsibility in the studio, you can, uh, you know, demand, get, a demand, better demand, demand. Yeah. Uh, we'll take a short break here. When we return, we'll talk about the study options and also how to get your foot in the door. Welcome back to Career Cafe. We are looking at careers in architecture and with us is Vikram Lal. Let's take a look at which are the best places to study architecture.